Hello there, this is coding to go and in this video you're going to learn everything you need to know about CSS Flexbox, the most important concept for creating modern and responsive websites. Let's get started. In preparation for this lesson, I have already created this example website. Basically, we have this container with five items. These items are just example elements, so this could be buttons, images, links, whatever you want. Our goal now is to create a Flexbox layout for these items. Using Flexbox, we will be able to control the alignment and size of these HTML elements. And since Flexbox is flexible, we will also control how they should behave on different screen sizes. So let's do that. Inside our CSS file, you can see that I have already declared some basic settings that make the items a bit more appealing. But this is not important for Flexbox. To enable Flexbox, we have to select the parent element of these five elements meaning the container. Now we take the display property and assign the value flex. By declaring display flex, this container is now a flexbox layout. Every element that is inside this container will have to follow the rules of flexbox. Everything outside of it won't be affected by that. Let's add a small border of two pixels solid black so that we can see the edges of the flexbox layout better. Again, this is not important, but only for demonstration purposes. As you may have noticed, we can see that now the flex items are being positioned next to each other, instead of on top of each other. This happens by default when you enable Flexbox. That has to do with the Flex Direction property. In Flexbox layouts, there are two axes along which you can align your flex items. The main axis and the cross axis. By default, the main axis goes from left to right. The cross axis crosses the main axis and goes from top to bottom by default. You can control the direction of the main axis using flex direction. By default it is set to row. That means the main axis should behave like the row of a table. It goes from left to right. That is why our elements go from left to right. You can change the flow of the main axis by declaring row reverse. Now the items go from right to left. If you set flex direction to column, the main axis will behave like the column of a table. Therefore, it will go from top to bottom. We can see that by looking at our five elements. Now that flex direction column is declared, they go from top to bottom. And again, you can reverse this by declaring column reverse. Now everything goes from bottom to top. Now that you know how to control the direction of the main axis, you can use the justify content property to control the position of the items along the main axis. To keep things easy, I set the flex direction to row as it was at the beginning. Using justify content, you can control where and how the items should be aligned on the main axis. The default value is flex start, so they are at the start of the main axis. If you set it to flex end, they will be aligned at the end of the main axis, meaning on the right side. If you say center, they will be exactly in the center. And since Flexbox is flexible, it will stay at the center even if the size of the parent element changes. Using Justify Content Center is a great way to center HTML elements along the main axis. Now it is important to know that Justify Content is completely bound to the main axis. Therefore, when we change the direction of the main axis to column, Justify Content will behave the same as before, but now vertical. To do that, let's increase the height of the flex container, because at the moment it is too small to see a difference. Remember, now the main axis behaves like the column of a table. It goes from top to bottom. That means flex start is at the top, flex end is at the bottom, and center in the center. You see, what exactly start and end means depends entirely on the flex direction property. By the way, if you want to control the gap between the items, there is a better way than using margins. When grid layouts were added to CSS, the gap property was introduced to Flexbox layouts as well. So whenever the display property of an element is set to either grid or flex, we can use the gap property to control the distance of the items. Therefore, we actually don't need the margin over here anymore. The gap property controls the gap between the flex items. Let's talk a little bit more about the justify content property, because there's actually a lot more to that. Flex start, flex end, and center are pretty common things that you most likely have already seen in some other ways without using Flexbox. 
However, there are some other special Flexbox features. For example, the value space between. Space between is a combination of multiple flex values. If you set justify content to space between, the items will be distributed over the entire flex container. The first item will be displayed at the start, the last item at the end, and every item in between will be aligned evenly. So when I change the size of the parent element, the spacing of the items stays perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Other quite similar values for justify content are space evenly and space around. Here, the first and last element won't be forced to the edge, so that they have a bit of space for themselves. When space evenly is used, you will have the same distance everywhere. When space around is used, the space before the first item and after the last item is half of the space that you see between the items. Here you can see a one by one comparison of the three values to see the difference. As I said in the beginning, there are two axes along which you can align items. The main axis and the cross axis. So far, we have only talked about the alignment of flex items along the main axis. If you want to control the position of the items along the cross axis, you can use the align items property. The align items property works exactly the same as justify content. So you can apply the same values that we discussed earlier, but now for the cross axis. When flex direction row is declared, the main axis goes from left to right. Therefore, the cross axis goes from top to bottom. Justify content center will center the elements along the main axis. Align items center will center the elements along the cross axis. So, using both properties, you can center elements both horizontally and vertically at the same time. And obviously, there's also flex start that will position the elements at the start of the cross axis and flex end at the end of the cross axis. These values can be used for both axes. Working with Flexbox and Align items can get very confusing if you don't keep in mind the flex direction. You should never think of one of them being horizontal and the other vertical, since the direction of the axis can change. That is why you should always remember in what direction the main axis is going right now. Alright, now you know how to use Flexbox for alignment purposes. But that is actually only half of what Flexbox can do. Using Flexbox, you can also control the size of HTML elements. That is really important for all kinds of modern layout designs and of course for responsive web design. So listen carefully or else you're going to miss out on something really important. A good website needs elements that are able to change their size dynamically. The most important Flexbox properties in this context are Flex Grow, Flex Shrink, Flex Spaces and Flex Wrap. The Flex Grow property determines how much an element will grow relative to the other items in the container. To show you this, we go back to our starting point where the only Flexbox property is display flex and gap of 10 pixels. I also removed the height of a flex container to keep things easy. The flex grow property enables the items to grow, specifically to fill out all of the available space inside the flex container. As we can see, there is still some space left. If we go to the items and set flex grow to one, the entire remaining space inside the container will be filled. This property made the layout responsive. Because when there is more space, this space will be covered. This is because every flex item has now flex grow enabled. You can also use this flex grow feature on specific items. So you don't have to apply it on every item at once. If I head over to the HTML code and give the first item an ID, item 1, and then select this ID in CSS, I can use the flex grow property to control the growing capacity of this exact element. For example, if I set it to 4, then this item will grow 4 times faster than the other items. We can see, if there is more space available, the first item will take 4 times more space than the other items. This does not mean that it is 4 times bigger than the others. It only means that it will cover 4 times more of any new available space. If you set flex grow to zero, the items will not be able to grow. Now only the first item will grow and the others won't. The value we assign is only important when compared to other flex grow values. Currently it doesn't matter at all if this item has a flex grow of 1, 4 or even 10, because there's no one else competing for the free space. If there is less space available, the elements will shrink. But the shrinking has actually nothing to do with flex grow. 
the shrinking happens because of the flex shrink property. This is set to 1 by default, because CSS Flexbox automatically prefers a more responsive behavior. Therefore, every item has the ability to shrink down if necessary. If I set this to 0, the items won't be able to shrink down. They will not be smaller than the width that is assigned to them. This will reduce the responsiveness, because the items will overflow the edge of their parent. This is something you want to avoid, because it looks bad. But what if you don't want your items to shrink, and at the same time you don't want them to overflow their parent? In this case, you can wrap them. If you set the flex wrap property to wrap, you get a multi-line layout. So if there's not enough space, the flex container will just create another line. We can see, whenever there is more space needed, the container will just create another line and put the overflowing element on that new line. And if we apply the flex grow property again, the items will fill out the free space on the new lines as well. So we actually get a very modern looking and responsive grid layout just by combining flex grow and flex wrap. If you want to disable flex wrap, you can set it to no wrap. This is the default value. To control the starting size of a flex item before any growing or shrinking occurs, you can use the flex basis property. This is useful if you want your items to have different sizes. In this example, you can see flex grow, flex shrink, and flex wrap disabled. I'm only using flex basis, addressing every item one by one, declaring a unique size. These will be the default sizes of each element. Flex grow and flex shrink will use these as their starting point. And since you will be using flex grow, flex shrink, and flex spaces always in some sort of combination, CSS actually provides a shorthand for the three values, called flex. The first value is flex grow, the second flex shrink, and the last flex spaces. So this is the same as this up here, but using only one line of code. All right, now you know the theory behind Flexbox. However, knowing the theory is not enough. If you really want to learn something new, you need to try it out yourself in a real-life project. And that is why I have prepared this practical project for you, where we will create a simple but beautiful Flexbox layout together. This was Coding2Go, and I will see you in the next video.